takes it from us. Smeagol, what are you doing here? Hello. I'm Trista. I co-host the Babbling Bards podcast. Babbling Bobs? Yeah, the Babbling Bards podcast. A podcast made by Zenites for Zenites. Zul what? What is it, Precious? <laughs> the Zenites. The fans of the television show Xena Warrior Princess. Zena? Oh, Smeagol has to be going now before she comes and finds him. <laughs> Little hobbits. What was... That? Was that? Yup. Was he? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, that's strange. I didn't know Middle Earth had television. Who knew? Hey, guys. Welcome to the... Already done. You didn't wait for me? I was explaining the show to Smeagol. You can tell him what we do during the podcast. Uh, you mean the part about how we do step-by-step -step overviews of the episodes, tell them where the oopsies are, and uh, give them fun facts, and as we, you know, go over subtext? Yeah, that part. Nah. I'm too bummed that you started without me. Oh, boo. Who freaking freaking who? <sighs> so what's today's episode? Today's episode is The Path Not Taken. Ooh. First aired October 2nd, 1995. And originally titled Going Home. What? Because, so to speak, Xena goes home. Uh -huh. Like, not Amphipolis home. No. But she goes back to, like, a bunch of her old dives, old haunts, old okay. hangs out with her old buddies. That are really bad influences on her. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> then we have a guest cast. We have a, a, a young prince named Agranon. We uh -huh. have a young princess named Jana. We have Marcus, who is one of Xena's old flames. Yeah. Cuckoo Kachoo. We have Mazintius, who is a big evil king slash warlord, and it's the first time Arms I've seen him. Arms dealer. <laughs> Arms dealer. He's also a warlord. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. And this is the first time that we see the characters of Mazentius and Marcus, because both of them right. are in other episodes as well. They are. Not the yeah. actors, but the characters. Well, I mean, the actors are all part of the characters. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> back to you, Liliana. <laughs> okay, so what would you rate this one? The cat's eating my cheese. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Well, you just left it laying there. No, how much <sighs> they love cheese. I know. It's okay, Willow. I still love you. She'd be like, ha ha, I licked it. He's mine now. <laughs> Pretty much. So, uh. I would rate this one maybe, maybe, like, three and a half shots. Yeah, same here. I feel like a three. I wasn't crazy yeah. about it. Yeah, me neither. But me neither. I wasn't crazy about, I'm not crazy about Marcus. No, I no, no, no. love Bobby Hosea. Yeah. So it surprises me that I wasn't crazy about Marcus, but I don't know, maybe it's the whole Xena Gabrielle thing. Maybe you automatically don't like Marcus because you're rooting for Xena and Gabrielle. Is that what you're going through? No, I just don't like him. Oh, good. He's okay. Yeah. Me too, yeah. either. I don't care for him. <laughs> hmm. Anywho. Alrighty. So it starts out with uh, Prince and the Princess under the tree. Having a very disturbing conversation. <laughs> about, yeah. Getting telling their grandkids that their, that their parents, parents were created, created that tree. How disturbing is that? I'm so glad I my parents never had sex. I wouldn't want to hear that. I'd be like, ew, grandma, grandpa, don't want to hear it. <laughs> nah, 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 not listening. <laughs> glad my parents never did. Okay. I would cry. Keep, keep telling yourself that. I will. Okay. Do you want me to more? So how do you explain that? How I got here. <laughs> so, you see, there's this giant bird and he's called a stork. <laughs> and as he was flying over, he dropped me in a cabbage patch. <laughs> and I sprouted. So you're a cabbage patch doll? No, no dolls. <laughs> For the cabbage patch dolls. Don't no, they come from other cabbage. I've seen the cabbage patch dolls be born. Thank you. <laughs> they are born in Helen, Georgia. <laughs> at the Cleveland General Hospital. I've been there, because Georgia. <laughs> but anyway, they have nothing to do with Xena. Actually, they did have a Cabbage Patch doll that looked like Xena, and they had one that looked like Gabrielle that was costumed and everything. Oh, yeah? Did you know that? I did not know They that. also had a Kermit and Miss Piggy one. <laughs> and, uh, oh, they had another one. I, don't remember who. I think it may have been a Zack one from Saved by the Bell. You yeah. know what they need to have? Xena Funko Pop. Xena 
Funko Pops. That's what they need. I just I want, mean, I just want the Destroyer. Yeah. That's all I want. The I mean, and maybe an Aries. They just, they just came out with, like, the ones for Buffy. Like, what, last year? A couple years ago? It's been, like, two years. A couple years, years ago. No. It's been longer than that, because I've been out here for two years. Yeah, and about I, three years ago. Yeah? No, it's two been longer than that. I don't sweetie. think it's been longer than that. Yeah. I mean, it was recent. But, uh... Because, don't you remember the, uh, the special edition Buffy yeah, one for the San Diego Comic Con? That you got me. Yay. Yeah. 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 So, I mean... That's been, like, four years. It hasn't been, like, that long. It hasn't been decades, guys. Right. So, you know, the Buffy one came out years and years and years and years after Buffy. So, I figure they can do the same with Xena. So, I say we should, like... Petition it! Petition it! Let's start a petition! Tweet, you know, Funko on on, on Twitter. Twitter would, like... Let's hash- just start a big revolt. Let's just do a hashtag, you know, we want Xena Funko. If a Cheeto can hold the office of the President of the, of the United States... We should have Xena Funko. We should have Xena Funko Pops. Fuck yeah, man. So yeah. So, all of you who are listening, tweet Funko Pops on Twitter. Hashtag, we want Xena Funko Pops. Or, we want Xena Funko Pops. Let's do it! I'll we tweet it. Right, we do it right now. Do it right Let's now. Tweet it right now. Okay. You keep talking to the Xenites. Okay, but I'll, I'll tweet, tweet and then I'll start talking and then you can tweet. Okay. It'll be a whole tweeting frenzy. So, yeah. I think that would be cool. We should have a Xena one. I Gabrielle one. I'm going to tweet from yeah. the... We should have an Argo one, too. <gasps> Ooh, an Argo that one. That would be cute. cute. We, need a, we need a destroyer. Destroyer. I have to have a destroyer. Gotta one. have Aries. I have to have Aries. Uh-huh. Aphrodite. I mean, <laughs> how can you not like Aphrodite? <laughs> but yeah, we hashtag, we want Xena, Xena Funko. Xena Funko Pops. Who are... No, not Funko. <laughs> Fun, fun, co. Can you can you tell what like my word of choice is? <laughs> but yeah. So so it's original Funko. Is it? At it's original, original Funko. Funko. Yeah, at original. That so doesn't that's, that's look the... like a Funko Pop, but okay. Yeah, it should be at original Funko. <laughs> I got it. Hashtag we want Zena Funko. So, I'm working on it. So yeah, I mean, you could do like the hashtag on Facebook now too. So hashtag the shit out of that. <laughs> Hashtag the shit out of it. Hashtag the... I'm done. Alrighty, so... Guys, not just retweets. Retweets will help. Yeah. We'll all retweet each other's retweets. We'll retweet. And- we'll totally spam Funko. Yeah. And we'll retweet and then do an original tweet with it. Right. As well. Get on it, guys. Come on. Get down on it. <laughs> get down on it. I'm done. <laughs> okay, so get on it. Do it. All right. I did my part. Back, back to... The path not taken. Yes. Okay, so we Funko got did not take the path of making Xena Funko Pop, so we're still on the path not taken. Okay? Okay. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's go. All right, so. Stop goofing around, jeez. I keep trying. You keep, keep interrupting me. Anyways, okay. <clears throat> so they're under the tree, you know, talking about kids and stuff. And then um, these warrior goons pop in and start, you know, fighting. They knock, what's his name, to the ground. Ag. Agro- Agronon. 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 They take the princess away. Now, don't you have a, a, a an oopsie about Agronon? I got an oopsie. Sure. I got an oopsie. Share the oopsie. Can I do two things at one time? I think I can. So, as they're fighting and Agronon gets kicked because, you know, he can't take care of himself, <laughs> there is an oopsie. They, uh, no, I can't do two things at once. Look at that. Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> he's kicked, and he lands on his back, and his medallion goes and lands next to his right ear. Well, in the very next frame, it's back around his neck. So, you guys keep a look out for that. It's an oops.
So, two girls walk into a bar. Uh-huh. One short, one tall. Uh-huh. One blonde, one brunette. Yes, the short blonde one is like completely oblivious to what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> As Zena is knocking out the fellows that are trying to hit on her and leering at her and and Gabrielle's just la 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 la. la, la. <laughs> and here in the first and only episode, you see them recapping the episode before. Prior episode, yeah. yeah. Um, which was Cradle of Hope. Uh-huh. So, yeah. that's uh, almost a breach in the fourth wall. That would be what? But it's not the fourth wall, for those of you that don't know, like Liliana, who's like looking me. at me like I have, like, five heads. <laughs> Anytime a show gives some sort of nod that it's an actual television show, uh-huh. That's called breaking the fourth wall, and it spans in anything or through a bunch of different things. Like it can span from referring to different clips on the show uh-huh. to referring to the day that the show airs to referring on to the date that the should. God, Twitter's going mad now. <laughs> that's awesome, guys. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. So anyway, that's like Buffy for those of you. Buffy fans out there, uh-huh. there's a line in the musical episode, Once More with Feeling, yeah. where Buffy says, Don's in trouble, must, must be, be Tuesday. Tuesday, because the show aired yeah. on Tuesdays. On Tuesday. yeah. So that was the nod from the show is, hey, yeah, we recognize we're a TV show. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> um, so that's kind of a nod because it's almost like a last week on Xena Warrior Princess, this is what happened Yeah, type deal, even though they don't say it that way. Right. But So that's what breaking the fourth wall is. It's when the show nods to the fact that it's a show on TV. Okay. Not to be confused with clip episodes, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Because we've got our first clip episode coming up, actually. Like, within the next few. Anyway. Yeah. So, they're walking through the bar. Xena's Xena's kicking ass, taking these guys that keep coming up to her. And and, and we see the fire breathing again. Mm -hmm. And in this one... You can actually see the fire coming back at her. Like on the previous episode, we talked about the whole fire breathing thing. How if the content of the alcohol is too strong, it comes back at you. Mm-hmm. Well, that happened on this one. I mean, it did. I mean, Lucy, Lucy wasn't like hurt or anything on it, but you can like you can see it coming back. Yeah. So watch for that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So when she does that, everybody at this one table just kind of scatters, and then Gabrielle's all like, "No." Oh, How we, uh... Never have to look for a seat? Never have to look for a seat? Well, yeah, it's because it scares the crap out of everybody. Go, (laughs) Xena! So they sit down. Xena just kind of kicks back, throws her legs up on the chair table. (laughs) Very (laughs) dude-like. Xena is a woman, not a dude. But you gotta admit, the way she just, like... I sit like that. (laughs) So, yes, I can defend Xena. (laughs) Very dude-like. You guys so hear anyway. this? Do you hear how she's talking to me right now? <laughs> she don't love me. <laughs> Nobody loves me. <laughs> That's natural. Okay, I'm All over right. it. Okay. And so then we have Agronon. Agronon? Agronon. Right. Not the, yeah. Okay. Not to be confused with Aragog. Aragog. From Harry Potter. From Harry Potter, yeah. Like Jana, I always want to say Jabba. But she's not the hut. She's not the hut. She's just Jabba. I was about to say it again. Sh- Shana. <laughs> you know, us yeah. Italians, we would call her Yana. 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 Because it's actually a derivative of the name Giannis, which is the the Roman god of new beginnings. Uh-huh. Um, he's the two-faced two guy. Because ah. he looks forward and he looks back. He's also the god Giannis. of chaos. Giannis. Okay, that reminds me of the Buffy episode, the Halloween one. where. Oh, yeah. The, huh? Yeah, he's got the Giannis statue. Yeah. And, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so Agronon comes and just drops a bag of money, money right in front of them. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Gabrielle's all over that. Yeah, she's like, Ooh, like white on money. rice, <laughs> like stink on a hog. And uh, and what does Azina says? says? Uh, she says she doesn't kill for money or sport. Right. And he's like, well. You know, then he launches into the hole. My chick was kidnapped. Right. So can I, I sit can, down, can please? Can I sit down, please? <laughs> He's such a wine tit. Zena bed. No. You not can sit. <laughs> like, go, go to hell. Can I please sit down? No. So, no, he well, cannot. He even does. She lets him. She lets him. Yeah. She's such a gentleman. But he goes on to explain, you know, 
what happened pretty much says that, you know, the person behind the kidnapping is someone who's going to profit from this. Right. And he mentions that it's you know, Mazentius. Which catches Zena's ear. Yeah. And then and then before before this, you know, mm-hmm. we have another another guy try to come up behind Zena and, and she does this 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 kick that oh, pa mm-hmm. <laughs> that I, I mean I can't I can't do that. Okay. But and you gotta remember though, I got taekwondo under my belt. <laughs> but yeah, she just I don't know what the heck she does. Plus, she just plus plus seventeen years of musical theater <laughs> under my belt, so I I got the limber. Yeah, I, I got don't. that part. I don't. I, yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah, she just I think Gabrielle's all like, oh, it's okay. She does that all the time. Something like that, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I laughed at that. But anyway, so, yeah. A needle pulling thread? No. You said <laughs> so. Mean, yeah, but not that so. That's so. Ma? <laughs> Doe's a deer. A female a deer. Female deer. <laughs> okay, so back to the future. Right. So, you see Xena weakening down, and she's finally pretty much agreeing that, yeah, okay, she'll, she'll go and get the princess back. Right. And so she formulates a plan. Well, then the next time that you see them, uh-huh. they're coming together, Zena's getting ready to leave, and we have subtext. Okay. According to 250 people. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I remember now. All right. Do you? Yeah. Do you really? Yes. It's like that, that hand thing. Yeah. Okay. Not that hand thing. Mine's out of the gutters. Huh? Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> there's a scene where they're saying goodbye. Actually, before that. Uh-huh. We'll go to before the goodbye scene. So, there's two... Evidence is a subtext in this one scene. Okay. Okay. Right. And this is based off of 250 people's opinions on a Xena Warrior Princess thread that I get from my research because I have to research. Right. Especially this early in the series. <laughs> later on, I'm getting better. I can start seeing it like in the later, later episodes, but this early, I, I have a really hard time. Um, you'll get it. Yeah, maybe. I will. I mean, I root for Xena and Gabrielle. I really do. Uh huh. I still love Aries. I know you do. But I root for Zena and Gabrielle. Promise. So uh, there's a scene where... Z- oh my god, Twitter! Twitter! <laughs> I love it! It's the We Want Funkos. Yay! Yeah, retweeting and... Keep right. doing it. Keep doing do it. it. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> okay, so... Oh my god, we've got to get through this podcast. Okay. We're already like All right. 21 minutes in. Okay, go. Subtext. Sub- subtext. Yes. Subtext. It's super subtext. <laughs> okay, so according to the people that I was performing research on, completely humane. <laughs> no viewers were harmed in the making of my motion research. Okay. <laughs> um, there's a scene where Gabrielle tells Zena, are you sure about this? I don't want you to get back in there and decide that you like that lifestyle again. Well, these 250 individuals feel that that was Gabrielle's way of giving a nod to the fact that there was something going on between she and Xena, that it may not have necessarily been sexual at that point in time, but there was some sort of romantic attraction between the two, Mm -hmm. and Gabrielle didn't want Xena essentially to go back to boys' town. She wanted (laughs) her to stay with her. Yeah. Um, that's why she was so frightened. And they also went as far as to say that in the later episodes, like the episode Heart of Darkness, uh-huh. when they're all over other people, yeah, like Zena's all over Lucifer, Gabrielle's all over what? Virgil. It's <laughs> uh, that that's a disturbing episode just because of that. Which I do get a crack up at the little ooh scene at the end between Gabrielle and Virgil. But anyway. <laughs> They went as far as to say that this episode marks the beginning of them being okay with if it's for the greater good, Uh they're okay with each other playing at a character as their significant, as like being interested in them. Right. Because this episode marks where they're able to be completely comfortable and completely trusting of each other. So people took that part as subtext. However, I just took it as Gabrielle didn't want her. Going back into the Warlord Hayes. Yeah. You know. That's how I took it too. Her get, getting caught back and up. So and it's all not that. just me. I'm not alone. Yeah. I'm seeing it that way. Okay. I mean, that's how I saw it. No oh, good. I mean, I can understand people seeing that as subtext, but I didn't take it that way though. Well, I can understand people seeing it as subtext because yeah. obviously, if you're naive, 
You've never had a substantial relationship. Yeah. You've been primarily interested in fellas. Mm -hmm. And your partner that you know has been with dudes. Right. Is now about to go into this throng of men. You know, obviously the naivety is going to kick in and you're, yeah. you know, you're going to be skittish that, hey, I don't want them. I don't want this person that I care about going back that way when I care about them and I want them with me. You right. know, so I can get yeah. that. Yeah. I, I, I understand that part. Yeah. So then the second evidence of subtext is when they're going to leave or when Zena's going to leave and Gabrielle squeezes. Well, they give each other a hand squeeze, yeah. like a little Zena hand gives, squeeze. Yeah. Zena gives Gabrielle a hand squeeze. And there's a shot. It's like quick, but you can yeah. see Adrenon just kind of glancing down. Like, oh, that's what yeah. kind of game this is. I got you. <laughs> I got it. Hands off the bard. And then Gabrielle offers to tell him a story. Yeah. To which, pass time. Which wasn't in your script. No. That yeah. line was, uh, I don't know if Rene O'Connor improv that line. Yeah, that wasn't in the... Or if it was something that was suggested at a table read. Because, mm -hmm. you know, episode 13 is uh, Athens Academy of Performing Bards. Right. So I think almost this episode was used as a way to solidify Gabrielle as a bard. Because... After it, after she's left Potadia, yeah, there hasn't been another mention of her wanting to be a bard, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's uh, yeah. that's why probably they threw that in there. I think that was one of their best bets at a table read type deal because their table reads, like you can see in Who's Khan, mm -hmm. the behind the behind the scenes for Who's Khan, you can really see how much they play off of each other in a table read because yeah. when you're reading with other actors, then you get a grasp on, hey, this will work better in the scene yeah. as opposed to this. Yeah, why don't we do it this way instead of like yeah. this? And... Well, why doesn't she say something like this instead yeah. of, right. you know, that doesn't feel clean to me. It doesn't feel like something that Gabrielle would say. Why didn't she say something like this? And yeah. So that's that would be my bet. It was, it was something that was thrown down at a table read and yeah. they went with it. Or so it anyway. could have been just in profit. It could have been because they improved a lot. Yeah, they did. <laughs> which was which is cool to have a cast that can improv because improv you wouldn't think, but it's actually really hard to do. Yeah, being able to get up well, and just roll. Ted Raimi, he would improv all the Jockster the Mighty songs. Mm -hmm. They were that's why they're never the same because he couldn't remember what you know he said previously, mm -hmm. so he just make up a new one. That's why the Jockster the Mighty songs are always different. Well, and Lucy did the same thing with the Annie Banani song. The Annie <laughs> Banani, she kicks Fanny. <laughs> she did the she did the same thing because the one that she ends up singing is nothing like the one originally. <laughs> but uh, yeah. and then Renee O'Connor did that with the with the Gabrielle song, huh? um, that set to the tune of the Beverly Hillbillies for Fins, Fems, and Gems. <laughs> I don't even that episode. I mean, I remember you that You don't? Episode. I remember that episode. Wait, no, I'm thinking about a different one. Okay, I'm thinking about the Married with Fish Sticks one. That's the one I don't. Because I... that one's just, that. that's that's at the bottom of the I barrel. I hate that episode so much. <laughs> Me too. Okay, Fence Feminism. Okay, yeah, like, I, I if know. that episode were a person, I would murder it. Married with Fish Sticks, I would. No, but no, the little baby's that. cute. <laughs> the baby's cute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I know which one you're talking about. Now. Yeah, Femmes and Gems. Okay, the one with Solaris. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, she improv the gummy listen to the story about Gabrielle. Yeah. Then she couldn't remember what she'd sang, uh -huh. so um, Joe DeLuca <laughs> ended up having to actually pen one out right. for her because she couldn't remember what she'd sang. So anyway, oh, yeah. so it's awesome that they can have an improv yeah. cast. Yeah. So it could That's have been cool. improv. I don't know. Anyway, so now, yeah, this tall bronze woman walks into a bar. Okay. And it's filled with slime and goo. <laughs> uh-huh. And then we see Ian Rhea. Uh-huh. Who plays Brissus in this episode. He plays Philemon in later episodes. Yeah. He plays Philemon in Warrior Princess and Warrior Princess Tramp. Yeah. However, he only plays two characters, so he's not designated as a, what's the magic word? Triquette. Actor. Triquette actor. Very nicely done. Got it. I got it. She got it. She got it. 
See, sometimes when we're explaining what these, th well, when I'm explaining what these things are to you, it's also the first time that Lillian has heard <laughs> heard these phrases to, oh um, Michael, like trick cat actor, and say it again earlier with the fourth wall thing. Yeah, I get look, like looked at like I have about five heads, but I'm not a hydra. I promise. <laughs> I might can act like one something, but I'm not one. <laughs> Anywho, so everybody's all like, Zena, and they're all happy yeah. to see her, but they're also dogging her and asking all these questions yeah. like, you know, what happened with the baby with King Gregor? I ransomed the baby to King Gregor. Yeah. Well, what about Draco? Draco. Oh, Draco only said this and that because I wouldn't give him his way. Well, why did you even try and fight Draco? Because he came after my, my mother. mother. And then... I have a few things to say about your mother. It's Marcus! And then there's this tense moment. I think there's going to be a brawl. But there's not. There's not. Then he says, uh... How, how is, is your mother, mother? Zena? Yeah. And then they hug. Yeah. And that's when you first start getting the little feelings that, hey, there's warm fuzzies here. Yeah. And you can't discredit it as just Zena's flavor of the week, right. like you can with a lot of Gabrielle's, because, you know, they're rarely mentioned again, yeah. ever. Yeah. The only ones that are mentioned are Perdiccas, mm -hmm. and then the the kid from uh, Death and Chain. Oh, okay, yeah. But he's not even mentioned again. He's Well, he is, but yeah, he's mentioned again in uh, Athens Academy of Performing Bard, because she's talking about the Death and Chains. Oh, right, right, right. And, uh... Since I had to say goodbye to someone that I cared about very yeah, much. Yeah, that's right. But, so, but Marcus can't just be written off as Zena's Flavor of the Week. Mm -hmm. Like Ulysses. Yeah. You know. Because Marcus, was, it's, you know, clear that Zena is willing to go to the underworld for. Right. Like Immortal Beloved. And that that's where I fall out with the subtext this early in the season. Mm -hmm. Because when you still have somebody that has feelings that strongly for someone, speaking from experience, it's hard to move on to someone else. It's hard to love somebody else right then. Uh -huh. Not you. This was way before you came along. <laughs> um, but, but yeah. it's Because you, you can't... I don't think you can have that, that type of affection for two different people but there are people that that think you can't yeah. because i mean it would it would be a tug because you're attracted to this one person but you know this other person is your soulmate uh -huh. so it may have been a constant battle between the two i don't know i don't know. i wasn't there me neither i'm not old enough to be there <laughs> anyway so yeah. she and marcus are chit-chatting and and walks mazentius with two guards and he seizes this little rat-looking dude uh, at the table. It kind of reminds me of Peter Pettigrew from the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> like, his actions, not his looks at all. But the way that he's... <gasps> the shaking and everything. Yeah, shaking in fear. Mm -hmm. and like, oh is shit, like, oh shit, he's gonna kill me, he's gonna kill me. Mazentius is like, you turned two of my men against me. And then, and then he motions Two of his from, other men, yeah. Kill the guards that came in with him. And then Mazentius offers this dude a job. Yeah. Because he's impressed. He's impressed that he turns him in. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he's all shaking in his boots thinking he's going to be killed. He probably will still be killed. Maybe. I'm pretty sure he's dead now anyway. Probably. Anyway. <laughs> so, we're, we're trying to move on. I feel like okay. a quicker pacing. Right. Guys, we're go. already in like 35 minutes. Jeez. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, so, Mazentius sees Xena, yeah. and he automatically jumps to the conclusion that she's trying to steal his weapon. Yeah, but she's not. No. He thinks she is. You want to expand a little on it? Huh? Huh? You want to expand a little on it? No? Oh, okay. Oh, on, on Xena, on him thinking that Xena's trying to take his weapons, and then she's not, and then Marcus introduces her to him. Uh-huh. And he's like, I know who she is. Yeah. Well, good. Okay. <laughs> so mine just went blank. It's because I asked you. It happens to me all the time. Yeah. You ask me a question, and I will have known the answer. Like, for the last ten years, I will have known the answer. <laughs> I just went blank. I'm like, oh my god. So. <sighs> <sighs> Fill in my blanks. Fill in I, your blanks. <laughs> it's just not, oh my god, it's not there. That's okay. So, as they're talking and chitter-chattering, Xena finally tells Mazentius, I came to offer my services. And he's like, okay, well, we'll meet in my office in half an hour, right? Yeah. So, Marcus takes 
Zena to the hot springs. Yeah. And they're talking and they're, you know, getting all chummy and talking about the glory days and that they've thought about each other almost every second since then. <laughs> and then Zena catches a glimpse of the princess being taken out of the hot springs. Right. So she shoots off to Mazentius and she starts talking to Mazentius about the princess. And Marcus is like, hey, I didn't tell her that. She figured that out herself. Right. So Zena yeah. Zena like, tells him, you know, if you go to her, it's going to lower her value. Yeah. Isn't that you later, can, though? No. No? Okay. Go to her, it's going it to lower her value. You can keep her, you can ransom her. Mm-hmm. And Mazentius tells her, oh, it's not going to be a big deal because she's going to be dead by morning anyway. Right. <clears throat> well, then we flash to Gabrielle Agron. and Agronon. Yes. And Agronon's telling Gabrielle about... About how they met. Oh, no. Oh, God. He's just going on about how how was how, love at first sight, love at first sight, and how they how they met, and how he feels about her, and so Gabrielle was all like, well, also again young and naive. Oh, we should go tell her father this. You know that way he'll see that you didn't do it. That's not how it worked out. They no. got captured. Yes, they did. Thrown in shackles. Yes, and that that what do you call it? That where your head and your hands are just sticking out. The blah. Yeah, that. <laughs> Gabrielle's in in that thing, and 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 Agamemnon's <clears throat> got like this shackle thing around his neck, like a big bad puppy. <laughs> bad puppy. <laughs> so, so they got caught, and that's essentially the last time we see them until the until end of the, the end. episode. So right. there will be no more flashing back <laughs> and keeping up with other people that aren't Xena and Marcus and Mazentius. Okay, okay, got okay. It. Glad we all agree. <laughs> so. Then we go where Xena and Mazentius are talking, and he's liking the way that Xena's making sense. Uh-huh. Because she's like, you can get a war going with uh, Boeotia and with Colonus. Uh-huh. Oh, back and forth over this princess. Right. right. And the money. So he's like, hey, I like the way you think. She's like, and then you can constantly be giving weapons to each other. You can play both sides, essentially. Yeah. That's what she's saying. He's like, oh, I like the way you think. So, yeah, maybe we will keep the princess around. Right. Well, then they hear this commotion outside. Yeah. And you have Jana, Jana. not Jabba. Not Jabba. Who's Jana. standing up top, and she's got a knife, and she's standing there saying, I'll do it! I'll do it! I'll kill myself and jump! Uh-huh. Because. Little overkill. Little overkill. <laughs> which, which, you know, Zena tell, and Zena yeah. tells it. Don't Mazent- you think that's a bit much? Is what yeah, don't you think her. that's a bit much? <laughs> and Mazentius is like, I'll bring her down. And Zena is like, no, let, let me go. So oh. Zena goes up yeah. to talk to her. And she's like, stay away from me. I'll yeah. do it. I'll do it. And Zena's like, isn't that a little overkill? Right. A bit and much. She's, yeah. Bit Something much. like that. I'm here to help you. She doesn't Agri- believe her. Agronon sent me. And then Zena shows her the medallion. Yeah. So the princess comes off the ledge Oh my god, he did send you. Now I fall out with that. (laughs) Because, do you know why? Why? Because being a former cop, yeah, first thing they teach you is common sense. (laughs) Right. Okay. So somebody gives you a medallion, some sort of token, right, that a certain person sent. How did Jonna know that Xena hadn't just killed Agronon? Yeah. And now it's coming after her to kill her. Wasn't in the script. Wasn't in the script, but she was a freaking fool for not even thinking that, man. <laughs> so, but now going back just a little bit, this scene was a lot a bit different Difference. in the original script versus yes, the shooting it script. Was. Take it away, Lily. So this one, uh, pretty much is all like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump, and she, doesn't she like try to? Lunge at Xena with a knife or no, something. No, in the original shooting she script, says, she tells Xena she's going to turn the she dagger. She threatens her. She yeah, threatens, threatens her. her with the dagger. And so, you know, Xena says, do you think I, you know, let you get close enough to do anything? And uh, <laughs> so she, like, backs off. Or something. Mm-hmm. She's, she's still going on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Mm-hmm. And Xena's all like, okay, have it your way. And she pushes her off. <laughs> Which is a very Xena thing she to do. She pushes her off the ledge. And as she's falling, Zeno whips out the, the the breast dagger, you know, the one that she snagged from Gabrielle in the dream worker. Because Gabrielle had no breast to hold it up. <laughs> and so she takes it and, and oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah. catches. She doesn't she, catch her, catch but she's, Jana's skirt's billowing up, and so she stabs the stabs breast dagger. It. There we go. 
through her shirt. And then, her skirt, <laughs> not her shirt. And then she puts 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 the pinch on on her mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and pulls her back up. And John is all like, "Oh my god, I can't move." And Zena's just like, "Oh, you'll be fine. You'll be all right. You'll live till you die." And then that's when she shows her the the, the medallion. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's how it was originally supposed to be, but it wasn't. No. We got what. You know, what we got. But I think they should have kept that in there. That would have been funny. I think they should have, too, actually. <laughs> see, usually with the original scripts, you can see why they scrap certain things. Right. But this one, not so much. I really can't. <laughs> so, and then it's all telling her, you know, oh, meet me at the hot springs mm-hmm. tonight later. And uh, then she goes down to where Mazentius is and, you know, tells her, didn't I protect our investments? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, uh, what is it that he says to her? I know he says to, to, uh, oh, jeez, what's his name? Marcus, mm-hmm. you know, the don't let your passion, she, don't let your passion overrun your sense of loyalty. I can't remember what he said to, to Zena. Don't, he or no, Zena said to yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't let your passion something, something. Overrun your good sense or something like that. Sure. I don't know. She didn't say good sense. I don't no, remember no. what she said either. See, anyway. to be honest, I didn't really care for this episode. <laughs> um, anyhow. So, yeah. Then, and then isn't this like where Zena and Marcus start talking about how... Where Marcus says he's tried to do good one time. Yeah. And Zena's like, when? And he said, well, I was working for a fellow. Uh-huh. And there was this this kid that wasn't able to walk. Yeah. And said that he begged his employer not to let that kid suffer. Right. And the employer was like, okay. Okay. So he chopped his head off, killed him. Oh. <laughs> and Marcus was like, and then I decided I was done. Well, obviously he didn't stay done. He wasn't strong. He wasn't strong enough. No. So anyway, Xena scrambles to the hot spring. Yeah. They hear voices outside. So she gets John to hide in the pool. Yeah. And she puts on this this robe with her <laughs> with her uh she had her armor off right no and she pulled she pulled like a almost a set of pajamas on over her armor over her armor and her leathers and all I that I could have sworn she had her the you know her leather but not the armor on it. no I could be mistaken okay you are okay but what she's wearing in this scene is uh-huh. the same outfit she was wearing in the dream passage in Dreamworker right so there's your there's your little Easter egg. Right. It's not necessarily an oops, it's an Easter egg. Uh-huh. Because it relates back yeah. to a different episode. Yeah. So you got Mazentius banging on the door. Who's in there? And they finally bust in the, zo- in the door and there sits, or there stands Xena. Mm-hmm. So like I was told I could use the hot spring. Like, the right. hell's wrong with you? <laughs> so, she talks her way out of now in the original script. She was supposed to have on the robe, but she was supposed to not have anything on underneath the robe. Right. And then try to mis- try to distract Mazentius with, you know, yeah. <laughs> woman. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so they chit chat and uh, Mazentius mentions about how they've captured Agronon and a companion. Now, this was different in the original script, too. And this has always bugged me in the shooting script. But because Xena is protective of Gabrielle, yeah, you can already tell she's protective of her. It always bothered me that she didn't say anything about Agronon's companion when Mazentius threw in the word companion. She just let it roll. Maybe she didn't want Mazentius to, I don't know, figure out that she knew them. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But in the original script, she says companion. Like, yeah. she's taking note of, you know... That hey, they got Gabrielle too. Oh shit! <laughs> but anyway, so, so yeah. that was a little different. Yeah. And then moving right along, huh? We go to the weapons room, right? And Zena has knocked the guard out outside the door. Yeah. And you know where I'm going with this. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Because I'm about to go all Trista. Okay. Okay. So she's knocked the guard out to go inside. The guard drops. Zena goes straight in after the guard drops. Well, not too far behind her, Marcus, who has always skipped the part where he's been back at the bar with, or in the tavern with Brissus, and they're telling yeah. him that, hey, Zena's not 
what she says she is. She gave the baby to King Gregor. She didn't take any money for him and this yeah. and that. Yeah. So Marcus has gone off to confront Zena. Right. Zena, who has dropped the guard outside of the weapons room and gone on in to try and figure out a way to smuggle the princess out. And then in run, runs Marcus right behind her. Who doesn't see the guard <laughs> that's been dropped outside the door. Nope. He's like, dude, what are you doing, Zena? Yeah. And then he proceeds to ask her what's in the box. And in the box says there's arrow, or book. There's bows, oh. and then there's arrows oh, for weight. weight. And he's like, arrows like this one? And he pulls one of the arrows off the wall. Yeah. And she's like, yep, just like those. And he's like, I didn't think you'd seen these. We just developed. So Zena has, like, this oh shit look on her face. And she's like, Marcus, trying to talk to him. And then in strolls Mazinti. Or, well, no, he says. No. Marcus says that I he'll, uh, no. Marcus says he'll show her the arrows. They'll cut, they'll cut through a wooden shield like a knife through butter. It's and then like, he aims it at the box. Oh, shoot at that box. That'll be the That'll target. be a good target. That'll be a good target. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, Zena steps in front. Mm -hmm. Now, that was different in the original script, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, the scene where she steps in front of the box, she in the original script, she doesn't stand in front of the box. She lets him fire the arrow. She lets him fire it, and, and then, then she, she catches, catches it. And he makes the comment in the original script, I knew you'd catch it if the princess was in the box. Right. So, so but shooting that, one, but that was true. Shooting script. Shooting one, you know, he, he she says, steps uh, in front of it. Yeah. And he said, uh, oh, do you, are, are you afraid before, I'm going to hit, hit the princess? princess? Yeah. And, and then, she, then starts, she starts trying to reason with him. Yeah. Telling him what's on and all that. And then uh, he yells for the guards. And then Mazentius hears a commotion going on. Mm hmm. So then, and Mazentius nor any of the guards coming in see the unconscious guard outside the door. Well, maybe they did, because of all the commotion, they just, like, ran right over him. I don't know. But anyway. Still doesn't explain my Marcus. <laughs> Why Marcus? I call Oopsie. Well, maybe he did. Didn't mention it, because, you know, confirms you know. Oh, he'd have mentioned it. <laughs> I don't know. But I anyway. have the most confidence that he would have mentioned it. So, so anyway, they go in. Zena grabs Jana, takes her upstairs, tells her to stay there for as it, however long it takes. Right. And she proceeds to start... Kicking ass. Yeah. And then Marcus says, Dana got a dagger to, to Jana's throat. throat. And then she says, you know, well, she's no different than that, that little that boy. boy. Than that boy. So then he gets a moment of, oh shit, you know, and you're right. Back. So he drops the dagger or just, or takes it away from her throat. Mm -hmm. And then Mazentius be like, uh, he's like, that's uh, enough of this. Yeah. So, so he draws the bow back to uh -huh. shoot Jana. Yeah. And Marcus steps in front. Steps in front and takes the arrow. And then this is where we see where we see Zena just kinda lose it for a moment. She sees Marcus getting shot mm -hmm. and she throws the chakram and slices Mazentius' throat with it. And this is also the first time and only time that we ever see it bring blood when she slices somebody's neck with the chakra. Yeah. Because they deem that as too graphic for <laughs> for network television, which is why they don't show that going forward. Like even when Xena in the in the Destiny episode uh -huh. with Malila, even yeah. when she slit the guard's throat with the chakram, yeah, you still don't see the blood. Right. Yeah, so she kind of the only it time there. you do see blood, come to think of it, is the uh, the episode One Against an Army. Uh -huh. You see it there when Gabrielle's having the vision, right? And the soldier drops, drops through him. the roof and slices Zena's throat. That's the only time you see blood coming. There. Right. But anyway, so yeah, had a, a moment there where she just kind of like snap ah, for a second, snap, yeah. And that's the only person that we see her snap with being killed, with yeah. the exception of Gabrielle being hurt, right, and Solon, yeah, being hurt, right. and Eve. Yeah. So there's some connection there. Yeah, but anyway. And then we hear the funeral dirge, which was written by and Lucy. Sung, sung by, by Lucy. Lucy Wallace. Some people seem to think that Lucy didn't write it, but she did. She wrote it. She sang it. It's in like a uh, it's in like a Hasidic chant type uh -huh. deal, which is a cross between Hebrew and Aramaic. Okay. And um, essentially, what she did, she took a bunch of random words that she thought were neat. <laughs> Push and pretty, together. and she squished them all together, <laughs> and they set it to music. Yeah, and 
the song Burial was born. Right. We will hear it many more times. The show progresses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah. I mean, it's, it's very beautiful sounding. It is. Now, I will say this, though. She's... Now, Lucy Lawless performed Burial live every time they filmed. Yeah. Except for the episode that she was pregnant in. Okay. When she was way pregnant. Yeah. In uh, the Seeds of Faith episode. Uh-huh. When Eli is killed and they're walking the they're walking the hill. Yeah. She's not singing. She lip syncs it. And you can tell because Lucy Lawless, because she's a singer, uh-huh. is not a very good lip singer. <laughs> Which is opposite with Renee O'Connor because Renee O'Connor is not a professional singer. <laughs> Nope. Um, by any stretch of the word, she's an excellent lip syncer. Uh-huh. Yeah. So anyway, she doesn't sing it when she's pregnant, but all the other times that it's performed, she does sing it live. Live in person. Yes. So I think that brings us to Gabrielle saying, "You know, I wish I could have known him." Yeah. And Zena says he was my friend, my and friend. and Gabrielle says, "Well, that's a nice way, or that's a good thing yeah. to be remembered that way." And then Zena does that freaky "my friend, my friend" thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it wigs me out, really, because I'm like, yeah. the way she says it's just odd, you know? <laughs> yeah. But she, uh, in my opinion, it should have just been left at, it so, would have been a better closing with, with Gabrielle having said, be remembered like that is a good thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then just I mean, like. I mean, I can see her saying, yeah, he was my friend. And then leaving it there. And leaving it Instead of adding the, the other two, my friend. My friend. Yeah. I was just like, eh. it's kind of weird. It cheesed it up. Yeah. For me, to be honest. Yeah. It cheesed it. <laughs> I had, I had such a hard time, um, such a hard time feeling empathy. Yeah. For Zena after those last two. Because the first time when she said he was my friend. Yeah. It was like, oh, she lost her friend. Yeah. And then. And then those other two and it's like. And then it's like, it, then it's like Titanic. You have to fight laughing at the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. I la- I was one of those, I laughed in the theater when I saw Titanic. <laughs> because Rose is all, I'll never let go, I'll never let go. And then she just shoves him into the she water. Let's go. The fu- no, she like pries his hands well, yeah. off and then pushes him in the water. Frozen on the like, yeah. like, dingus. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, so, that's, yeah, I think the closing should have been. A little, a little different. Right. But it's I didn't okay. write it. No. It was still a pretty nicely done episode. Yeah. I think. It was. It may not have been my yeah. favorite because of the, the characters in it, but it was. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Agronon gets on my nerves. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. And John is a wine tit. <laughs> so. And that is the path not taken. It is. Dun, dun, dun. Now, our next podcast. The Reckoning. No. No. Our next podcast is going to be a little different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The sixth one. You tweeted the sixth one. I mean, I tweeted the sixth you one. tweeted the sixth podcast. Oh, yes, you did. No. I read it the other day. I was like, oh, okay, we're doing it then. I did not do it. Yes, you did. I, I promise you did. Later one. You said Maybe. six. She said six. Hang on. She <laughs> said six. I know she did. So my tail's tucked between my legs now because apparently I tweeted the sixth podcast. You did. I did. Not me. <laughs> I did. Not Liliana. <laughs> Liliana remains innocent for now. I'm going to say, I know. I did. <laughs> okay. Oopsie. Okay. Back to me. <laughs> uh huh. Just you were wrong. I was incorrect. You were wrong. Say it. I can't do it. Say it. I no. was Blech. wrong. No. <laughs> she cannot say the word wrong when it pertains to her and when she is wrong. I would have. <laughs> I would have better luck hooking up with Hope. <laughs> yeah. <Before> anyway. It- <laughs> Before she hatches, even. <sighs> so, our next yeah. podcast is going to be different. going to be answering your guys' questions. Any that yeah. you send us. We've got a few already. We've got a few. We need more. We do. Okay. We're going to... So. We're answering questions about the show. Um, be that the actual show itself, behind the scenes stuff, our personal opinions right. on the show, why uh-huh. we chose the episodes we did, um, who our favorite characters are, yeah. um, about ourselves, you know, personally, like nothing crazy or anything <laughs> like that. But uh, anyhow, you guys have questions? Now is your time Send to get them. answers. Send them. Like I said, we have a few. We need more because we're doing a giveaway with these questions. Yeah. So tell them about that. You guys get to win something. So everyone who submits what's that something? I don't know. Everyone who submits what's that something? a question will get 
thrown into a drawing. Yeah. Not like actually physically thrown in. You know, we write down your names and put them like, in a hat. We can do that, but we would just have to find you. Yeah. But if we did that, it would give you guys the opportunity to, like, stick your hands up, and then one of us just reach in and grab right. your hands me, and me, yank me, you me, out. Me. You see all these hands um, But Problem. anyway. <laughs> so, I make these, like, custom-made bracelets and keychains, and not your, like, cheesy little plastic keychains. I mean, I make, like, photo charm mm. stuff. They're metal. Metal. And Heavy metal. And so whoever gets picked in the drawing will win one. Now, you get to pick This what... is where the pot gets sweetened. Yeah, you get to pick what you want on that keychain. So you can pick whatever image you want, you know, be an image of Xena, one of Gabrielle, one of the both of them, one of Ares, Callisto, whoever. And then there's mini links on those keychains too, right? Yeah, there's like, there's uh, there's one big picture and then there's a bunch of tiny ones. And then there's like some tiny ones. So if you guys are like familiar with the the Italian charm bracelets, that's pretty much what this, what the, the smaller links are. And then you got like a big one. So, and I'll have to throw one. You know what, though? I can, uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Yeah. I have a Buffy one that you make. Yeah. We'll throw that. We'll throw the picture of the Buffy one up. That way you guys can see what we're talking about. Yeah. But yeah, you guys get to pick your own, your own images, your own whatever. Yeah. So you guys just send me the pictures you want and she'll make it happen. And I, I will make you a pretty little keychain. So yeah. And then, and then once we have like our website all arranged the way it's supposed to be we'll also have like a link up there where you can buy them i pre-ejaculated the website <laughs> yeah it um, wasn't supposed to be long i accidentally hit publish yeah before it was ready to be published yeah because so if you guys go on there and see some things kind of out of whack and stuff not there it's because it got launched a little early surely by accident pressed the wrong button i pressed the wrong button so but yeah We'll throw up under the goodie section. Bracelets, keychain. I mean, and I do make the the, the, the little plastic cheesy ones, too. So <laughs> That are a little more inexpensive than the, yeah. than the metal ones. And again, those, you can also pick whatever you want to go in there. Because I'm flexible like that. I can be like, oh, okay, that's what you want. Okay, no problem. I can do that. And she does it. Yep. She does it indeed. So, so yeah, submit those questions. Get the word out. Retweet, repost. Let people know, hey, you can win a little prezi. Just send the question. I will say this, though. Um, probably the same day that we air the question answers, uh-huh. we probably will air the Path Not Taken podcast. Okay. That way, the ones that didn't submit the questions okay. that don't necessarily want to hear our answers. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to hear us talk? Come on. Um, uh, <laughs> we'll still throw that podcast up. That way, there's something for everybody. Okay. If they have no interest in the contest. They don't have to suffer through it. Okay. Anywho. Alrighty. All right. So, um, this is going to go up probably at some point today. Hopefully. Yeah. Tonight. Okay. Possibly. Alrighty. Maybe in the morning. I don't know. It just depends on how quickly YouTube gets it pressed and uploaded. Right. Um, but it, today is the 23rd. It is. So, you guys have five days if you're in the California area to go see Renee. O'Connor at the Little Fish Theater performing Dinner with Friends. You stepped all over my line. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. I'm done. <sighs> it's okay. You did the thing with Smeagol earlier and just kind of left me out. So, anyways. Where did he run off to? I don't know. Maybe the cats chased them away. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, wrong set. But yeah, I mean, we've tweeted and Facebooked about Renee's theater performance thing. So if you guys go to our previous tweets or our previous Facebook post, you will be able to find where you can go and procure ticket right. to dinner with friends. The links are in yeah the post and the. Uh, <laughs> We're going on. We're going to Saturday. Saturday! Yay! In the party. <laughs> Sorry. So, we'll be there Saturday. So you guys can show up Saturday. Yeah. You guys can say hey. Hey. You guys can say hey and come see us. Alrighty. Too. Yeah. Which we're not as going to be as popular as Renee O'Connor is by any means. Right. But we'll be there. Yeah. We should be there too. Our last show was Sunday. Yeah. So, so we got you four, guys, there's four performances left. So if you guys want tickets, snatch them up. Get on it. Before they're gone. They are no more. Then they are no more. Oh, I said gone. Uh-huh. Okay, Captain Redundant. <laughs> All right. So I think that does it for us. Next podcast will be the answers to the questions and the reckoning. Yep. The reckoning. The reckoning. First appearance of Aries. Yeah. Got him. Got him. Oh.
Alrighty, so get on it and uh, get on the, you know, hashtag we want Xena Funkos and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Because I want to destroy your one really, really bad. <laughs> okay? Okay, let's do it. Ready. All right. Goodbye. You guys have a great, grand, and groovy rest of your day. Till the next one. Until the next time. Peace out and happy chakrams. <laughs> the little hobbitses. <laughs>